Welcome to the Switch It Up show. I am Seth Trav. I am not actually the stranger from Resident Evil 4. I am, in fact, myself. And I, me, I, the Seth Trav, am joined today by the one and only, our friend Glenn. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How are you doing this fine, fine evening? I'm doing rather well because I was actually looking around the internet and I saw that Resident Evil 4 and 5 are coming to the Nintendo Switch this October. Yeah, I get mixed feelings about that, man. This game is, these games are constantly released on, like, every console ever. Like, I, I can only buy this game so many times. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm, I'm probably not going to get another one. Um, although they are great. Uh, but another thing that's great is obviously these sweet, sweet beats. Anamana Gucci from IV Me. It's a tray of. First review today is going to be War Tech Fighters. It's $19.99 and you get 100 gold coins when you buy it digitally. War Tech Fighters combines Japanese anime with Hollywood blockbusters. Configure, upgrade, and customize your War Tech and save your galaxy. Traveling across the galaxy, the rebel colonies of Hebos. Hibos. If you watch the video, it's going to be in the link here, down in our show notes. You'll be able to see me struggle to try to pronounce Hebos uh, and Eres. Join forces to battle against the Zatros Empire with the deadliest weapons ever built. Struggling. Vortex. Taking space combat to a whole new level. Vortex are giant mechs that combine cold, precision, and state-of-the-art technology in the battlefields of space. Wartech Fighters is a space action game that combines the spectacular action of Japanese anime with Hollywood blockbusters. Configure, upgrade, and customize your Wartech and dive into the battle to fight back the Zitronian forces and save your galaxy. I'm a little bothered by the fact that they repeated this Hollywood blockbusters thing twice. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm like, didn't you just read that? I did just read that. That's a little... Showing your hand there. Showing your hand there, Blowfish Studios uh, and Drakkar Dev. Um, so, if you like Gundam and you love doing those Gundam games or Armored Core or Mech Assault, I believe was another one of them, um, this game is probably going to be right up your alley. I feel like it... I don't know, graphically something about it seemed stunted, um, as if the lines on everything weren't necessarily sharp enough, if that makes any sense at all. Um, there are a ton, a ton of unlockables and customizable things. If you want, you can really make your thing look like a Gundam. You can really make your Wartech look like a Gundam. So obviously I made mine look like a Gundam yeah, at some yeah. point. I'm sure you did. Um... I spent a good amount of time with this game. It It is very fun and simple and right. It's exactly what I want because I love a Dynasty Warriors Gundam. That is, that is my ideal game time because it's a giant robot and I can just like mash a few buttons and zone out and enjoy myself and keep unlocking more giant robots so I can keep zoning out and enjoying myself and having a decent enough time that being said the load screens and load times for this game i i feel like they are fairly unbearable Oof. i feel like i was spent more often than not i was spending more time on the loading screen than i was on any actual level which it's not what you want is not at all what you want that's mm. not at all what you want um, I don't know if it, it's it's the limitations of the Switch that we're doing this, or if... I, w I would have to say that, yeah, it has to be the limitations of the Switch, because it, it, it just has so much that you can do and so much that you can customize and make unique to your specific bot that that's got to be what's dragging down this load. Because there's not... It's not like there's a Dynasty Warriors level 
amount of enemies on the screen. More often than not, you're just in space. So it's not like you're rendering levels that much. I think it's just yeah. struggling to actually render your created robot into this this backdrop, which is a true, true shame. Um, yeah, it, it, that, it, it really gutted me that this happened with this game. Um, the music is, is okay. I feel like it's not unique enough amongst itself, but it it's fun to do so much of the robot fighting that I didn't really mind it. Um, the sound effects are a little, I don't, know, I don't know, they're a little goofy at times. Like, they feel like they were pulled straight from, like, robotnoise.gov, you know? <laughs> robotnoise.gov. Like, let's, let's just see what robot noise we can get. Um, yeah, and there were times where the battles did get fairly large and, and extravagant, and... By the times I was getting ready to go into those fights and and do those cool things, I was already like, "What the hell? It took this long to load." Like again, it takes longer to load than you would actually play a level, um, because if you if you are adept to doing the Dynasty Warriors style of game, you're probably going to be able to fly through the levels relatively quickly. Um, all that being said, War Tech Fighters. Uh, if, if a few patches could come through and it could alleviate some of these load stresses, I think this game would be relatively up there. But because of the limitations and the general, I don't know, I want to I say shortness of every level and, and repetitive nature of the, of the game, uh, I'm going to give it a 3.5. Hey man, I mean that that's a pretty good score considering like the like the punishment it sounds like you went through just to play the game. I'm very lucky that I have a cat and a dog that I can talk to while I wait for games to load on the Switch. Hey man, hey. Well, you know what? You can always like, you know, take a little rest, get a, you know, a few winks of sleep if you will with Back to Bed. <laughs> uh, the game that I reviewed this episode here on the Switch It Up show, it is $4.99 on the Nintendo eShop. In this game, you have to guide Bob the Sleepwalker to the safety of his bed by taking control of his subconscious guardian, Sue Bob. Uh, Back to Bed is an artistic 3D puzzle game with a surreal twist. Bob is an unlo- unlucky narcoleptic who has a tendency of falling asleep in his boring office and then proceeding to sleepwalk into the dangers of the big city. Luckily, Bob is, has a subconscious guardian named Sue Bob, who protects the sleepwalker and guides him back to the safety of his bed. The ever-vigilant Sue Bob must lead Bob on a journey through a series of surreal painting-like cityscapes where the boundary between Bob's dreams and reality have vanished. It features un- 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 wow. unique, <laughs> surreal, and artistic game. Um, game it should say gameplay, but it says game. Um, play in a piece of art set in a digital frame that mixes elements from the real world and the world dream to create something unique and surreal mind-bending isometric levels it says navigate detailed 3d puzzles that defy the laws of physics wherein the player must manipulate the strange environment to create a safe path for bob and avoid the dangers of the puzzle um plays two characters as one plays the embodied subconsciousness in the form of a small guardian creature trying to save its own sleepwalking body from the dangers of the dream world um this game kind of looks like um what is that mc escher um painting uh with like all the uh, never-ending stairs. Yeah. Um, I So I, I was going to interject just for a hot second here. Mm. I feel like this is definitely becoming a genre uh, of puzzle game at this point because um, we've already reviewed The Bridge. That was one of our first reviews uh, for this series. And I believe there were at least another two games that we already reviewed that, again, were very, very much an MC Escher-esque game and next week i believe i'm going to be reviewing uh etherborn which is again another mc escher-esque game so i don't know i'm starting to see a lot of people get burnt out by this style um however i'm not i think it's cool and i think this game in particularly looks like mc escher meets tim burton yes um, yeah, you hit the nail on, on the head with that, with a little bit of um, 
Like it uh, has love texture craft thrown in there. Yeah, the, the, just just looking at the screenshots for this game, everything has a texture to it, and that is is oftentimes uh, where you find the true art. Yeah, if, man. If, if images have this textured feeling, so being able to see a game actually encapsulate something artistic, it had to have been a breathtaking experience. The game in itself, itself, especially the artwork, and like you are, you feel like every level here uh, is a dream. Uh, with like like all these different, uh, like they have these like apples like all over the place. They have uh, like a squid arm and yet another one. Um, Almost looks Dali. Yeah. Almost looks like a Salvador Dali. Super, an eyeball up in the sky. Super surreal uh, experience playing this. Um, and I mean, just another game that is like you know, the controls are pretty basic, uh, but yet as you go on, it gets very 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 amped up um basically what's happening is as soon as you uh, the game like the level jumps in as soon as bob falls asleep he's immediately sleepwalking and your job is of course to get him to go back to his bed but he can really only walk in a straight line and as you're controlling sue bob you have to kind of point him by getting in his way but you don't you're not necessarily sure like which way he's going to turn until he gets a little bit closer the game draws some footprints out uh kind of where he's going to go based on his current tra trajectory and you have to either obstruct that path um you know or well, you have to obstruct it in one way or another uh, in order to get him to change direction uh before he like walks off a ledge or walks into something that's going to like you know kill him uh, or into like an open drawer here in this one level um, there is an awesome atmosphere when you play this game uh, they have like all types of different um, things that can kind of obstruct your path get in your way um, ruin you uh, but as soon as you die uh, the, the level immediately picks back up and you get another shot at it um, it starts off like I said easy and then gets progressively more difficult I have fun with this game, uh, but I could definitely see how some people like could get a little bit frustrated with it because it does kind of like amp up as it as it goes on. Like not super high, but like it starts off. You start playing it, and you're like, oh, this isn't this isn't too bad. I kind of dig this atmosphere, and then you're like, oh, oh there's a lot more going on here. Um, there's definitely more that you have to think about as you're playing it. So it's not. Um, one of those games necessarily that you pick up and play and relax with. You have to be a little bit more active when you're playing this game. Uh, last episode, I talked about a game called Defunct, which is a first-person puzzle uh, platforming game where you're kind of just running all over the place, jumping on different things, trying to figure stuff out. But in this one, like you got to bring, you got to put your thinking cap on. Um, <laughs> and uh, you know, it's fair. Like I mean, it, it, don't get me wrong. Like I don't feel like they're like they're cheating you or they're making it impossible or anything. It's just you just have to know that you know when you're going into it, uh, you're gonna have to try to plan this out. Out a little bit more and sometimes you don't always have that much time to plan it out there is no like I mean you can't pause you can hit pause and I guess look and try to figure it out but you don't really know where Bob is going to go um, you know until you see his footprint uh, footprint drawn out there uh, so it's kind of one of those things that you have to kind of juggle as you're playing it and they introduce new hazards every single level so there's a lot you have to to deal with here but that is of course part of the fun uh, with back to bed uh, I had a good time with this game um, I liked it a lot um, the artwork is awesome. The music is cool. The, like I, I dig the setting. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say this is a four out of five, especially for four dollars ninety nine cents on the eShop. It's crazy. That's not too bad at all. And and as I said, of of all of the M C Escher esque games that are out there, this maybe is the one that truly looks most like M C Escher. Oh, definitely, man. Escher's work. Um, even though the bridge is is a direct M C Escher. I guess it's an official game of his stuff. I don't know. Yeah, who knows? But I don't, I don't know. know what you're saying. Until you can figure that out, ladies and gentlemen, all you gotta do is switch it up. <laughs>